Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Okay, Jacob, it looks like you're running Windows Vista Home Premium Edition, at least according to the system summary on the diagnostic report. I'm connected here to Jacob's computer, and I've been chatting with him. He's had a, a few small issues, actually just a couple of questions related to uh, setting up software, and we're using GoToAssist Express. Uh, I basically set up a session, give him a URL to click on, it automatically downloads the program for him and runs it, and now I'm connected to his desktop remotely. I've got a diagnostic report pulled up, tells me everything about his computer or the software on his computer, whether he was running Windows, which he is now, or Mac OS X. If you head to go.tagjag.com slash GTA, GTA, go to assist, not Grand Theft Auto, then it'll take you to the link where you can download your own copy of Go to Assist Express to start helping people remotely. Hopefully, this will become a regular part of what we do here at live.perillo.com, considering Go to Assist is a partner of mine. Uh, Jacob wanted to know how to set up a virtual machine, specifically Ubuntu, using Parallels. And by the way, I have Parallels coupons, go.tagjag.com slash Parallels will take you to uh, a page where you can save money if you wanted to buy Parallels. I also have coupons, by the way, for VMware Fusion or VMware Workstation. I can save you money on just about any software or hardware out there, by the way. Coupons.lockernome.com. So uh, what I did here was uh, first uh, go in and start the new virtual machine wizard. I asked him to place the Ubuntu CD in the drive, since that's the operating system he wants to set up. I'm just going to go ahead and create a typical VM. If I wanted to, I could create a custom uh, VM configuration. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. It's going to take a couple seconds, because remember, I'm connected remotely and, and controlling his computer remotely. Now I've got to give it the guest OS type. By default, it's Windows. It's actually going to be Linux. So we'll go ahead and select that. The guest OS version. And he tells me it is uh, Ubuntu, so we'll go ahead and select Ubuntu. I've actually got uh, defaults for kernel 2.4 or 2.6. We'll click Next. Now it says give it a name and the configuration file. We'll go ahead and, and keep those where they are right now. Finish. Directory does not exist. Do you want to create it automatically? Yes. Hopefully UAC won't pop up. Give it a second. There we go. We've got Ubuntu Linux set up. So the first thing I want to make sure is that the drive, the uh, assuming Jacob, he's, by the way, watching me on live.perillo.com, the CD DVD drive is the F drive on your local computer because that is what's going to be read when we boot this virtual machine up for the first time. And then when we do, it's going to read from the drive and then install from the drive, much like it would when you booted from a live CD or any kind of CD uh, that would uh, be uh, set to go off when the computer boots up. And then in theory, uh, it's already been saved. Uh, we should be able to, uh, let's go ahead, scroll back. I'm going to press the little play button there. That will turn on the virtual machine. And a virtual machine, by the way, is not emulation. It is software that accesses the hardware directly. And you can download a variety of virtual machines, uh, Linux, Windows, Mac OS X, uh, for certain configurations of VMware Fusion on Mac OS X. You can't run a, a virtual machine of Mac OS X on Windows or Linux. Apple won't let you do that. Uh, so it seems that auto-run feature is enabled for CD, DVD. Do you intend it to work with physical, blah, 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 blah. Click yes to disable auto-run. Let's go ahead and just click yes, disable auto-run. And with any luck, assuming that F drive is his physical drive, it should read from his drive the Ubuntu software that is on the disk that he's got in his computer and we should be able to rock and roll, again, in theory. Now, my recommendation at this point is instead of actually having a physical CD, that you attach an ISO file as your drive when it's first started up, because it'll read the ISO file, that ISO file, as a physical disk, that ISO file. And then you could boot from the ISO and then remove that once you've got everything set up and running. In fact, that there we go, Ubuntu, installer boot menu, try Ubuntu without, oh wait, hang on. I accidentally clicked the stop button. Here we go, the Ubuntu installer. Try Ubuntu without any change. Install Ubuntu, set, check CD for defects, test memory, boot from first hard disk, etc., etc. Go ahead and install Ubuntu. So I'm assuming I've got control here still, which I can control the desktop, his desktop remotely. We'll go down and install Ubuntu. Go ahead and hit enter. And now Ubuntu is going to be set up in the virtual machine. He can run Linux 
from within Windows. He could run Windows from within Windows. There's a lot of virtual machine uh, software available, including Virtual PC for Windows, uh, VMware, either Fusion or Workstation, uh, at least for you know people like you and me, regular users, or then again, Parallels. Now, everybody has their favorites. Oh, I forgot, VirtualBox. We also we featured that a while ago. VirtualBox is free. That being said, my favorite is VMware because I think it's the fastest on any platform. That's my choice. Everybody's got different choices. So now, Jacob, uh, just run through the configuration and tweak things as you like them. You can adjust the memory, uh, the allocated memory, uh, to the virtual machine as you go and see which works best for you, you know, running parallels. That's as easy as it was to set up Ubuntu in a virtual machine, at least running parallels. It's just as easy in VirtualBox, and it's just as easy in VMware. Virtual machine, not emulation. It's software that interacts directly with hardware, so it's fast. Got to love it. Don't you? Go.tagjag.com slash GTA. If you, too, want to help someone remotely, that's the software that I'd recommend using because then you get the diagnostic report. That's the thing that, that's the value add. That's the thing that really, I think, puts GoToAssist over the top. And I'm not just saying that because they're a partner of mine. I'm saying it because it's a cool little feature. My email address, chris at perillo.com, in case you've got something you'd like me uh, to take a look at on your desktop, whether you're running Windows or Mac OS X, go to Assist Express is compatible with both those operating systems. And you're also welcome to join us in our community of tech enthusiasts, geeks.perillo.com. Then we've also got the chat room that was watching me do this here for Jacob, probably cheering me along saying, no, don't click that, no, click that. It's like this is the closest thing we have to a sport is installing operating systems. That was the equivalent of a touchdown, I think. I don't know. If you'd like to join us in the chat room, we are typically talking tech, solutions, and problems, and answers, and lions, and tigers, and bears. Oh, my! Really, I, I don't know what's happening. But there's only one way to find out, and that's by opening up your web browser and flailing on over to live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.